Uh, we are privileged to have with us uh, Professor uh, Prashant Kumar Sivasala, Assistant Senior, Senior Assistant Professor, Institute of Environment and Sustainable Development, uh, Manaras University, who will be delivering a lecture, a talk on the techniques and challenges of retrieving soil moisture from microwave satellite data. On behalf of Direct Lenses and the Lenses Research Family, I welcome you, sir. And thank you for kindly accepting our invitation despite your busy schedules. Uh, before we proceed with the talk, I would like to briefly introduce uh, Dr. Prashant K. Srivastava. Uh, Dr. Prashant is working at the Institute for Environment and Sustainable Development, uh, Banaras Hindi University, as Senior Assistant Professor, and worked with Biological Sciences, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, Flight Center on SMAP Satellite Soil Moisture Retrieval, Algorithm Development, Instrumentation, and Simulation for various applications. He received his PhD degree from Department of Civil Engineering, University of Bristol, UK. The doctoral dissertation primarily focused on the use of optical and microwave satellite, SMOS data, with research weather, weather research and forecasting for hydrological application. Uh, Dr. Prashant was the recipient of several awards, uh, including NASA Fellowship, University of Maryland Fellowship USA, Commonwealth Fellowship from UK, Early Career Research Award from DST India, CSAR, and UBC Fellowships. He's also leading a number of uh, projects funded from reputed national and international agencies. He's also collaborated with uh, NASA JPL on uh, SMAP soil moisture calibration and validation, as well as CATSAT 1, NISA, AVRS, and Missions of India. Dr. Prashant has more than uh, 180 publications in peer reviewed journals and has published nine books with uh, reputed public publishing houses such as Springer, Tyler and Francis, Wiley Elsewhere, and several book chapters. He's, he also featured in the World Top Two Scientists uh, released by this focus recently. He's acting as regional editor, Asia Geocard International, Associate Editor of Journal of Hydrology, Water Source Management, Associate Editor of Remote Sensing. Associate Editor of Environment Development and Sustainability, and several others. So, with uh, this brief introduction, I once again welcome you, sir, and uh, request you kindly to deliver the talk. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shilas, for, for your invitation. And it is it is my pleasure that I am delivering a talk over here in ANSYS uh, on soil moisture retrieval algorithm. So, can I show my slides now? Yes, sir. Please share. So is, uh, is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. Okay. So uh, my topic is micro uh, microwave satellite soil moisture retrieval techniques and challenges. And uh, why I choose this topic and uh, why uh, we are working on this soil moisture retrieval uh, because of its importance in our uh, so many applications. Like uh, we started from our uh, defense requirement, natural disaster management, even our hydrological balance, and uh, so many other applications. So before starting this soil moisture, uh, what we understand with the term this uh, soil moisture, so it is the amount of water that is contained in the earth surface and uh, generally we are measuring this soil moisture by using two methods, one is called volumetric and second is called gravimetric basis. So if you see a soil system, it is generally composed of uh, three things, uh, volume of air, volume of water and volume of this uh, soil component. So if you are going with the, this uh, <coughs> volumetric soil moisture content, so it is simply a ratio of your volume of water and your wet surface like VW. So it, it will give you a ratio that uh, how much is the wet surface volume and how much is the your total volume contained in the in the soil surface. So generally with the help of satellite we are measuring this volumetric soil moisture content and if you see the V wet it is the sum of all these three things. So we, if you sum air and water <coughs> and then soil then you will get a uh, wet volume. Similarly, if you give the gravimetric, it is uh, it is measured um, uh, mostly on the uh, weight basis, and you can say it is a mass of water divided by the mass of the soil. So it give it gives us a gravimetric soil moisture content. So if you see the measurement of both gravimetric is generally we are measuring for since a long time by using uh, we collect soil sample from the ground, we dry it uh, two three days, and then uh, we calculate the difference between the fresh soil and the dry soil. 
and based on that we uh, give you the gravimetric soil moisture content but measuring this soil moisture content uh, in the ground is quite tedious and if you see if you are measuring soil moisture at one point and if you are going to measure a soil moisture on another point it changes because it is uh, uh, changing at a uh, changing with the topographical condition soil condition and other land, land surface processes so it is changing uh, you can say every 10 meter 20 meter soil moisture gets changed or there will be some variability in that soil moisture. So with the in-situ measurement, it is not possible to get a detailed idea of uh, your uh, surface. So that's why uh, we are going with this soil moisture measurement using this microwave technique. So I will come uh, with detail on this technique. So before this, why, why this soil moisture is important? So we already know this soil moisture is very important from our hydrological processes like it, it uh, uh, Based on this, we predict our hydrological cycle. We can map our hydrological cycle. With, uh, it is also uh, related to ecosystem functions. Like if soil moisture is uh, is good, if soil moisture conditions are good, then there is a uh, more microbial communities there. Soil is fertile, and it also support our uh, different functions like uh, uh, movement of ions in, in from soil pore to the plant and and and, and the vice versa. Similarly, it is also uh, link our uh, groundwater, our surface water, and so many other things. So it is also uh, a, a prime link between this uh, groundwater movement, or you can say movement of soil uh, uh, rainfall into the ground, and it links our uh, this type of system. And again, it is also important for our, our energy and carbon cycles. And if you see why uh, we are focusing on this uh, soil moisture measurement, and why there are so many dedicated satellite uh, launched, uh, to map uh, this soil moisture. You already heard about SMOS mission, that is soil moisture and ocean salinity launched in 2009. And after that, another satellite called SMAP mission, soil moisture active passivity is also uh, launched to measure this uh, soil moisture values in, uh, back in 2015. So there are a number of missions are already launched and number of missions are coming up to measure this soil moisture. Like there, are, there is one upcoming mission called NISAR, NASA ISO Synthetic Aperture Radar. It has a collaborative mission between NASA and ISRO, and they are going to launch it L and S band uh, satellite. So that is also one of the prime goal of this NISAR is to measure this soil moisture. So if you see the, this application that it is required in our weather forecast application, many people use this uh, soil moisture as a uh, input variable in, uh, in data simulation so that they can improve the forecast of rainfall and subsurface uh, variables that is related to land surface models. It is also a, a give us mechanism that how the soil moisture changes our local microclimatic condition, how it changes the formation of clouds and all those things. So it, it is a lot of application in weather forecast. We are also doing this for agricultural water management, like one of the prime thing is irrigation. So how we are using this soil moisture for uh, irrigation scheduling and demand assessment. How we can, uh, because if you know the status of soil moisture in, uh, in your field, then you can, based on that, you can decide how much to irrigate and uh, based on the soil moisture forecast, you will know that uh, when uh, you need the irrigation. So based on that, you can uh, designate the proper irrigation amount for different uh, fields. So it is also an important thing in policy decision regarding the uh, that canal water uh, distributions. It is also a very important component for natural disaster management. Like we know that if there is a prolonged dry condition, then it causes drought. And if there is a surplus amount of soil moisture in uh, moisture, in a uh, heavy downpour or a little amount of downpour will uh, cause flood flooding situation because if soil is already having a lot of soil moisture it will not absorb the rainfall so that will convert in the form of rainfall rainfall uh, runoff and if there is a lot of uh, if there is a heavy rainfall in that area then it, it may cause flood also so it is also one of the important component in disaster similarly crop insurance, agricultural productivity. If you are measuring a soil moisture at a timely interval, then you can uh, optimize your production also because it is found that even in three or four days of delay in irrigation cause a sub uh, 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 substantial loss in, in, in your yield. So it is also a, one of the important components in agricultural productivity. That's why IMD and other agencies are trying to go with this soil moisture uh, things. They are installing sensors so that it, they can make uh, agriculture more precise and again in the defense defense they need soil moisture measurement because uh, they are whenever the army or uh, there is a movement of army they, they want to know the land condition if it is very damp if there is already lot of moisture there then it will it will cause uh, 
problem in movement of their troops, their tankers, their other ground vehicles. So it is one of the things that they need so that they can uh, 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 do the land traffic ability in a better manner. So it is also an important component of, uh, of uh, defense. So you can see that this soil moisture is needed in more, almost uh, most of the application that we are using in our uh, research and development and as well as in defense. So how we can do this soil moisture measurement? So if you see, there are a number of techniques available. Like uh, initially, when there are no instrument sensors available, farmers, farmers generally go to the field. They take the soil by feeling that. They say that today's soil is dry and uh, there, is a, there is a need of irrigation. If they touch the soil, they feel slightly um, cold or moist condition in, in that soil. They can tell, okay, today or for the next three, four days, there, there is no requirement of irrigation or something. So that is a qualitative method. In qualitative method, we can say irrigation required or not, but we cannot say how much is required. Similarly, with the gravimetric method, we already, I already uh, mentioned that gravimetric is generally a weight of the uh, uh, moisture in the soil divided by the weight of the uh, soil. So it is a uh, more on the weight basis. Similarly, the tensiometer is there. It is also a, a old device that, that previously people are using for measuring the soil moisture. Then there is an external resistance block that is dependent on the resistivity. And there is a neutron probe that is, uh, again, they are uh, bombarding the soil with a neutron. And then they try to, uh, they measure the slow neutrons, basically, to get the idea of the soil moisture. Because when this neutron hit the uh, uh, soil moisture, it gets slowed down. So they, they want to know how much neutron gets slowed down. And based on that, they uh, give us the soil moisture information. Similarly, time dependent reflected based on the delay in the time uh, of travel of those uh, protons and uh, neutrons in the soil. So it is on, based mostly on electrical pulse that is generated by the uh, electrodes in this uh, instrument. And recently there is another advanced instrument we call as Cosmic Ray Instrument Soil Moisture Observing System, COSMOS. That is one of the uh, important instrument uh, is, uh, giving soil moisture at a uh, completely large spatial domain. So if you see all these soil moisture uh, in situ sensors, they are giving measurement at a point location. So uh, but this cosmic ray is giving a uh, soil moisture uh, at a quite uh, larger level or larger scale. For example, if you go with the gravimetric or tensiometer method, wherever you insert the probe, that will give you a soil moisture at that point only. So that ripples maybe a 5 meter area or 10 meter area. But cosmic ray is generally, a, is, its footprint is uh, comparatively larger than all these in situ sensors and it, it is giving around 500 meter spatial resolution. So it is quite a uh, quite uh, sophisticated, quite a costly instrument that now uh, people are using for measuring soil moisture, and we have a network in India also, Cosmos network that is currently uh, used to measure this soil moisture information. So these are the in situ sensors. But what is the problem with these in situ sensors that they are uh, discrete measurement and they are lifted to a, a certain locations only, and it is a point based. And if you want to go with the large scale variation of the soil moisture, that what is uh, changing in a district, how it is changing in a state, how it's changing in the country level or at a uh, continent level or global level, then you need to go with the satellite because that is the only solution that, that gives you soil moisture information over a large area. So there is a drawback with the institute measurement. That's why we are now moving more towards this uh, soil moisture using uh, this satellite because it is giving a more uh, values of soil moisture at both spatial and and high temporal intervals. So there are a number of techniques available that can be used to measure soil, uh, soil moisture, like optical satellite and microwave satellite, like Landsat, MODIS, they are all uh, uh, can be used to um, measure soil moisture, like there are already developed technologies in direction like triangle method and all, all of these techniques can be used to measure soil moisture. But the only problem is the optical satellite that they are, um, uh, their penetration power is not that good. In, in the soil, they can provide you soil moisture up to one or two centimeter surface only. Uh, so their penetration is not that good. Secondly, if you go with the, uh, their information, like uh, during the monsoon season, during the cloudy season, they are not providing anything because optical satellites are not, uh, they cannot penetrate the clouds and other uh, disturbances that is uh, existing in the atmosphere. With, but, but with the microwave satellite, their penetration power is quite high. They can penetrate through clouds. They can provide information during the night time also, which is not uh, with the optical satellite because they are uh, relied on the sunlight. 
and during the night as sunlight is not available so optical satellite generally don't provide any information about your soil moisture but micro satellite they are providing information both during the daytime during the night time it can also penetrate through the clouds because their penetration power is through the cloud is good and they can their penetration power is in soil is also much better than optical satellite so if you see the optical satellite is around 1 to 2 cm but with the micro satellite it can penetrate up to 10 cm in the soil so it provide uh, uh, more better information of, of soil moisture as compared to optical satellite so there are two dedicated missions already told that is mos launch in uh, 2009 and is map launch in 2015 and both are uh, providing soil moisture uh, field at a global level at uh, at around 36 km resolution and now they are done down scaled up to 9 km and and 1 km resolution so they can you can use those uh, satellite data set for your work so these are the two satellite that is operating on uh, l band 1.4 gigahertz around and why this l band because l band is uh, penetration power is quite better than c band or x band it can penetrate through the vegetation it can penetrate better in the soil so that's why l band is more uh, better for soil moisture retrieval as compared to other microwave frequencies like c band and x band and provide uh, data set in two polarization like uh, co polarization like hs and vb that horizontal and vertical polarization it both both in uh, available in smos and smr so as satellites are coming up and if you see the indian condition if you see the global condition it is much different if you see the uh, farms and lands in the uh, us or europe and if the farming condition in india it is totally different over there fields are very large quite homogeneous but in india fields are very small size uh, heterogeneity is very high and size of field is also very small so that why heterogeneity is very high in indian condition if you see in, in a one acre of plot they are generally uh, uh, growing uh, two three crops some are growing vegetables some are growing some uh, wheat or some other uh, seasonal crops but there are heterogeneity exists in that area but if we go with the us uh, system of agric uh, agriculture they are very large acres of land up of the same crop only so that is one of the challenge that we are facing how we can retrieve uh, soil moisture at a very high uh, spatial resolution accurately so that we can provide information to the government to the um, end user so that they can use this soil moisture at a at a much uh, at um, much better accuracy as compared to uh, the information available uh, uh, from the satellite because those satellite soil moisture products are calibrated and validated with the help of global data sets and those global data sets are actually tuned with with their condition but if you want to retrieve soil moisture in our condition then we need to assess all those parameters so that we can provide a better soil moisture information so if you go with the normal soil moisture retrieval algorithm that we know that it, uh, it is based on the brightness temperature and that is provided by uh, one satellite and other brightness temperature that we can simulate by using the uh, physical model that we call as radiative transfer model over here so with the help of radiative transfer model we simulate this uh, soil moisture at the ground by using the ground parameters and similarly brightness temperature is also provided by the satellite by smas uh, smap or by smos so how it works that how we are measuring this brightness temperature at the ground so it is based on actually a term called emissivity and a, a, a other term called physical temperature so if you multiply this uh, emissivity with the physical temperature that give you the brightness temperature and its whole whole calculation is actually uh, try to find this emissivity at particular polarization hs or vb so uh, how we can calculate this emissivity so if you see the simple relation it is a 1 minus reflectivity and if you calculate the reflectivity then you will get emissivity and if you multiply this emissivity with the physical temperature you will get your brightness temperature and uh, how we calculate this reflectivity so before starting calculating reflectivity we know that soil moisture is highly sensitive to the dielectric constant of the of the soil based on the water condition dielectric constant changes so there is a model involved here is called dielectric mixing model and it is a very simplest model for sake of clarity i am using this here that how this helicanon model work so it is based on sand percentages and clay percentages so if you have a soil texture information about your sand and clay then if you put this information in this equation and all this coefficient b0 b1 and uh, uh, a0 a1 c2 all are given in this helicanon paper if you go through it 
and if you put all this coefficient over here and for l band 1.4 gigahertz all these coefficients are available so if you put all this coefficient your sand and silt uh, sand and clay percentages of your soil that you can uh, do by by using bucus hydrometer or any other texture methodology so generally we are using bucus hydrometer we collect a soil we mix it with the kalgan and then we with the hydrometer we measure the uh differences in the density sand and clay and then based on that we provided the information of sand and clay percentage and these values are already given in the literature so we use this and then we get this dielectric uh, constant so a dielectric constant and this constant then involved in your calculation of reflectivity that we need here so here theta is your uh, an angle of incidence of your satellite for example both smos and smap they are providing information at 40 degree approx so we put theta over here 40 degree and then we get this uh, uh, smooth surface reflectivity by using fresnel equation so this remove smooth surface reflectivity is a ideal condition but you know uh, our soil is never ideal we there there is always some roughness in that soil parameter it is not quite smooth like your glass or table so wh what is the roughness uh, value so once we have this roughness value inserted over here then we can get this smooth surface reflectivity and by this reflectivity once you uh, subtract this one minus uh, smooth surface or rough surface reflectivity then you get emissivity and once you multiply this emissivity with your physical temperature you will get your brightness temperature so this is the simple uh, calculation that we are using to obtain this uh, emissivity through reflectivity and then by after multiplying with the brightness of uh, physical temperature we get a brightness temperature at the ground so similar type of brightness temperature is also given by the satellite so we try to see where we are getting a minimum value of this brightness temperature simulated by uh, your model ground model and the satellite and this equation generally we are running at different soil moisture uh, ranges for example first we get a soil dielectric constant at 0.1 suppose there is a we provide a range so suppose it is 0.1 uh, meter cube per meter cube so we put 0.1 and then it equation run and give you dielectric constant at 0.1 similarly we provide 0.1 uh, 0.2 0.3 to 0.4 or you can provide from 0.1 to 0.6 in different ranges you can divide uh, that in random number and then you get a dielectric constant so generally in soil uh, soil moisture don't go more more than 0.6 meter cube per meter cube because after that soil gets saturated and uh, in saturated soil there is a no question of soil moisture because it is all pores are already filled so that will now after that will be a flooding situation if there is more uh, moisture is there so this mv we calculate from a 0.1 to 0.6 range and at every soil moisture value it will give you dielectric constant so here suppose you are running at 0.1 so you will get one value so one smooth surface reflectivity one rough surface when you run at 0.2 you will get another surface uh, reflectivity and uh, rough same way if you divide that 0.1 to 0.6 in 100 uh, fractions then you will get uh, this 100 ranges and you will get 100 value of this uh, dielectric constant and similarly you will get this uh, reflectivity and then emissivity so here you will get 100 values of brightness temperature so your model give you 100 value of brightness temperature because you are changing moisture condition over here and satellite is providing only one brightness temperature because it is taking a snapshot of your earth surface so we try to see we are we are getting the uh, difference for example uh, at uh, for example at 0.1 you are getting some value so you, uh, this is at mv mv 0. you are getting um, uh, that some dielectric constant value similarly at mv 0.2 you are getting some and if you put this mv value you, got, you are getting this and then this and then your rough surface and they are getting emissivity so at 0.1 what is your brightness temperature 0.2 what is your brightness temperature but and satellite is giving only one brightness temperature so this is from satellite and this is from your ground that is uh, by using this model ground so we try to take the difference we are we are getting the least difference for example at point 1 we are getting difference between satellite and ground point 2 we are getting some difference and where we are getting the least difference we declare that is the soil moisture of that particular soil so for example 
at point two, you are getting uh, brightness temperature of suppose three forty Kelvin at uh, from your model, and satellite is giving three forty one. So, if you take the difference, then it is one. But at MB zero point one, you are getting uh, three thirty nine from your ground, and satellite is is satellite is fixed is around three forty one. So take the difference here. So it is around two Kelvin. So here difference is less, and when you are getting less difference at point two soil moisture value, uh, sorry, so point two soil moisture value. So this is your soil moisture uh, uh, reading. So this way, this equation is running from point one. Point one one, point one two, point one three. So we are providing a range from point one to point six, and at thousand of ranges we generate this, and then we calculate uh, difference between the satellite provided that is generally fixed. Suppose in this case is three forty one, and we try to find what is the value at point one, point two, point three, point four, point five, and this way we calculate the uh, difference and see where we are getting the least difference, and where we get the least difference that is your soil moisture value. Corresponding to your MB, so approach is very simple, and this is for soil. But you know, in in uh, we don't have always bare soil. In natural condition, we have also have vegetation. We have uh, other called vegetation soil, and there is a contribution from sky. So generally, we don't take contribution from sky because uh, microbe is quite transparent to this sky. So we generally don't take this term. We calculate only these three terms: soil. Of uh, I've already showed you the soil one. back slide then we calculate through the vegetation and then we calculate through the vegetation and soil so this one i already showed you in in a previous slide this one soil so soil you already know how to calculate then in vegetation we have two things soil and soil vegetation both means you will get uh, uh, this already uh, uh, starting from the soil as well as soil and vegetation both and here in second case you will get both from vegetation and soil and we don't take this sky contribution because it is uh, microbe is quite transparent to sky it is not getting affected by sky sky condition so if you add both soil vegetation and vegetation soil then it will give you brightness temperature in vegetation as well as soil condition so it is a composite equation so there are three term over here if you see there is a omega we call as vegetation scattering albedo and other one is called your transmissivity there is a vegetation top temperature and there is a soil vegetation and temperature of the soil so this is a physical temperature from soil and then your vegetation temperature then you are getting in transmissivity so we try to find all these value and then we can get this brightness temperature in a in this soil vegetation condition so if you see that this is a simple thing that i showed you in the first slide that what we do what we do we provide soil moisture values mv okay then we put in a dielectric mixing model helicanon at different mv values from 0.1 to 0.6 we get some dielectric constant and that dielectric constant go to reflectivity model then we get reflectivity at smooth surface and then we include our roughness h and q parameter the roughness parameters and then we get reflectivity over the rough surface then we get uh, temperature over the land temperature over the canopy the tv and ts and then we don't take any sky contribution and then we get total relativity transfer over the land and then we get that tv brightness temperature and once you have the brightness temperature then we have a satellite then we try to find where is the minimum error we are getting that is corresponding to particle and the value so in case of low vegetation low vegetation means your crops we are not going with the forest right now because in forest retrieval is quite different their uh, uh, parameters are quite uh, sensitive and that's why we haven't uh, uh, get that accuracy in forest condition as compared to the crop because in crop our uh, soil moisture retrieval accuracy is quite good as compared to uh forest in forest because of dense canopy and other thing uh, we are not getting that much accuracy that we are getting in this uh, low crop or crop condition in cropping condition we are getting soil moisture around uh, 96% accurate only there is a error of 0.04 meter cube per meter cube so you can see that we are achieving a good accuracy in case of crop but with the forest this accuracy is only up to 60 or 70% so there is a challenge that how we can develop a model that can represent our forest soil moisture condition so coming to this uh, simplest model we call as tau omega model tau is your 
optical uh, depth and this omega is escaping and how we can do this uh, 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 model sim uh, by simplifying that previous equation that I showed with the soil, soil vegetation and vegetation only. So if you see we try to calculate all these value so in, in a uh, low crop condition we assume that this uh, uh, ground temperature physical temperature at the soil surface and uh, temperature at the vegetation uh, top level like canopy we assume that that is equal because that is a low height crop so there is a equilibrium between the soil surface and the vegetation top so we assume that these two temperature are equal so instead of using two different temperature tc and tg we use only one temperature over here either from the ground or from the soil canopy and we put over here and second assumption that we are taking over here that this omega vegetation scattering albedo in case of uh, uh, crop grassland crop it is not that much so we assume this component as zero so you can say it, it uh, revised to one minus zero and then here tc and tg are equal then you have to find only two things over here one is your reflectivity and the transmissivity so how we can find this reflectivity and transmissivity is very again based on very simple uh, approximation that this uh, transmission is a function of this tau and cos theta theta is your 40 degree that i mentioned is map and smos both are providing soil moisture values at 40 degree so theta is 40 we need to find this tau if we can find this tau then we can guess this transmissivity and this transmissivity you can put here the scattering albedo we are already taking as zero and then this reflectivity we need to use some dialectic model like heligainen by using heligainen you will get reflectivity if you put over here then you will get your brightness temperature over the crop so this is a sum of the question that we are uh, using here that how we are using this uh, ground temperature and if if it is available for example if you are going in the field then you can measure this canopy top and ground temperature and then you can put over here and you can vary this uh, a value a we can calculate by using this equation so it is uh, further advanced form of this but if you don't have a or bt value you can directly uh, employ this uh, tg and tc equal and rgp calculate your rgp and transmissibility and put over here then you will get your uh, uh, practice temperature by using your uh, zero order this tau mega model and simply we have a satellite again we do the differencing and see where we are getting the minimum error and then we uh, take as a corresponding soil moisture values so this is one of the thing that we use during the, our Goddard uh, campaign that we have this uh, comrade system we, in which we bo bo uh, have both this radar and radiometer in this uh, cylindrical antenna and by using this we are measuring uh, the uh, brightness temperature of the ground by using this radiometer and radar and as well as we have the uh, airborne campaign data and we try to see that how good is the, is the sensor when we are using at the ground and when we are having at the uh, aircraft and then we try to see that how good is, is the uh, accuracy so in this radar and radiometer we are getting the brightness temperature we are getting the radar based uh, other indices and then we are trying to calculate this uh, tau tau values so i will show you how to calculate the tau values so in tau mega model one of the important component is uh, your reflectivity so instead of using the helikinen model because it is empirical model heavily based on soil and clay inform, uh, sand and clay information we are using the mirror now mirror now is more physical model this is not an empirical model so it is giving you a more better dialectic constant uh, model value as compared to either dobson von schmugge and the helikinen so we are using this mirror now or dobson because both are physical method to get this dialectic constant and dialectic constant after getting this dialectic constant if you remember then we calculate smooth surface reflectivity by using a fractional equation and then we put our roughness parameter h and q and then we get it get this rough surface reflectivity and then after that when you multiply with the physical temperature canopy top or your soil you will get your brightness temperature so it is one of the very important thing that we need to be take care of because this uh, dialectic model is uh, one of the important thing that give you the uh, uh, link between your soil moisture and your physical uh, parameters like brightness temperature and other thing so here how can uh, we measure that three parameter roughness that h and q because this h and q if you get then you will get your rough surface reflectivity how we will get a tau and how we get this vegetation scattering albedo omega so how can we can obtain all this th three parameter because if you have all this three parameter then you can uh, monitor your brightness temperature 
So here, if you see, that this is a roughness board that generally we clear one meter by one in meter area um, um, in front of this roughness board. We clear it and then we take a photograph and then we digitize this uh, uh, surface and then we calculate this correlation length and the root mean square height and we put in a uh, uh, equation to get our uh, uh, roughness parameter h and q so once you have the roughness parameter by with the help of this uh, uh, roughness board this is one you can see this is a unit structure one centimeter by one centimeter and this board length is one meter so we get this information and similarly for vegetation water content, what we do, suppose there is a crop over here. So we, in one meter by one meter area, we cut this crop from the bottom and we dry it. We take a fresh weight, we take a dry weight and we get this uh, vegetation water content. So here in, for vegetation water content, in front of this roughness board, we take, after cutting the crop, we put in a brown bags and then we put in the oven to dry it. So before putting the oven, we take a weight in, in the field only, so uh, to get a fresh weight of that uh, stubbles or crop. Suppose it is already, uh, crop is already uh, uh, cut down over here, harvested over here. But sometime if you're going for a uh, natural field condition where there is a no harvesting done yet, so they, you can see the wheat in this one meter by one meter area. So we cut that wheat or paddy and then we take the fresh weight in that one meter by one meter area crop and then we dry it and then we get a dry weight and we, when we subtract the fresh weight of crop and uh, remove the dry weight then you get the vegetation water content in this one meter by one meter area so you will get in kilogram per meter square because it is a one meter square by one meter square area and simply if you digitize this uh, surface then you will get the roughness so you have this roughness H and Q parameter, you have this uh, vegetation water content, we dry it generally for three days at 70 degrees centigrade. We cut stem, leaf, component and we put in a brown paper bag, we put in an oven and dry it for uh, three days 70 degrees centigrade and we get this um, uh, vegetation water con content in kilogram per meter square. And similarly, once this vegetation con uh, water content is available, then there is a very simple equation to obtain this TP. This BP is already well defined by the uh, Thomas Jackson in number of experiment and he found it for crops this uh, BP is around 0 0.12 with the error of 0 0.03 so if you put 0 0.012 over here vegetation water content how you got is by drying that crop in one meter by one meter area we, you take the fresh weight minus dry weight difference then you get this kilogram per meter square, you multiply it with this 0.12 and you get this tau. So once you have this tau value, when you have this tau value, then you have you know, 40 degree cos theta. So tau, you already got by multiplying BP into VWC, you get tau cos theta 40 degree, you get your transmissivity. So you get your transmissivity over here. Reflectivity you got by Mironov, the electric model over here instead of Halicanon. Mironov is much better, so we are using Mironov now. And temperature, you either use some other satellite like MODIS or you will also get some other measurement technique to get this uh, soil temperature by using some thermometer. And then put it over here and scattering albedo is zero in low height crops. So we have all this term, then you will get the brightness temperature. So for low height crop, is, this equation is quite simple as compared to um, uh, uh, other crops like maize or forest area. Again, maize is uh, quite uh, we consider is not a low height crop. So over there, algorithm is quite is slightly different because that uh, TP value get changed. So here we get this uh, vegetation water content. We sometimes people also use optical satellite with the help of NDVI or leaf area index. They can get this BWC. But it is always good to go uh, measure this with to see with with your uh, ground parameter calibrator model and then simulate for different uh, land cover categories. So again, scattering albedo that I mentioned over here that for bare or low vegetation we take it at zero. For dense vegetation like for uh, forest area, generally we are taking at 0 0.05. But in our cropping condition, low vegetation we are taking at zero to simplify our model. So this is the uh, comparison between all, all this uh, four dialectic model like Halikan and Dobson Mironov, Wang and Schmuge. And we found that this uh, Mironov is quite uh, close to our ground observation. Error is quite less in Mironov. So 
we use this Miranov model in our uh, equation to predict this. And there is a, a, a land validation good practice document already released with the help of all the soil moisture scientists all around the globe. And this is now available from the uh, from the NASA website where you can see how different algorithms can be used, what is the good practices that can be used to monitor this soil moisture. So this is uh, this document is available free of cost if you just type land validation, uh, land product validation subgroup and good practice for soil satellite derived land product validation, you will get this PDF and we, we have mentioned all the models, some basic equation to retrieve this soil moisture. And see, this is some of the uh, uh, work that is currently ongoing with the NASA mission, NASA SO Synthetic Upper Radar. So in this, this is the aircraft where we are, uh, this and they are taking the reading of the earth surface by using this uh, L and S band. Here, along with L band, they have S band also. So they can, L band is good for soil moisture and S band is good for vegetation. So they, they, they are trying to combine both so that we, they can get a better uh, soil moisture retrieval. Because you remember in the previous slide I showed you that vegetation water content, you need to go to the field, you need to cut in one meter by one meter area, then you will get this vegetation water content. Or another way of getting this vegetation water content by using NDVI and LAI. And DVI is your normalized difference vegetation index and LEI is your leaf area index. By using both or any of them, you can get this uh, vegetation water content. But problem and DVI and LEI are optical products. And we try to move on to uh, only microwave solution, not with the uh, optical, because during the monsoon in India, we will get problem because there are a lot of cloud, lot of disturbances. So we will not get soil moisture complete time series during the monsoon season. So S band, instead of using optical satellite, S band is again, again a microwave and we will get uh, just uh, vegetation index by using this S band and then we will use with the L band to retrieve the soil moisture. And by using this vegetation index, we will get the vegetation water content, that tau, and that tau will go to the our tau omega algorithm and to retrieve soil moisture. So this is the some of the things that is published in the advances in space research that here we use Sentinel-1 uh, data set that is again uh, micro data set. We uh, divided a data set into calibration and validation and we have multi, we choose multi date images and then we train around 14 different machine learning and AI based algorithms. So on training data sets and when we get the equation and coefficient, we inverse the model on the uh, some area to get the soil moisture. Uh, information and with the help of testing data we validated whether our model is giving good result or not. So we tried 14 and we found that out of this SBC is giving uh, uh, much better results. So we are using this statistical clustering uh, difference method to get the soil moisture value. So this is a machine learning technique that we are currently using. So you can see this all machine learning uh, uh, problem with machine learning that you need to tune those, all those parameters. So we use SPM, we use random forest, multi-layer perceptron, RBF, WMS, VC, and so many uh, different uh, version of uh, fuzzy information system, like uh, uh, you know, hybrid and uh, discrete and then uh, this uh, uh, this neuromatter. So they are, we are using a number of different uh, uh, machine learning technique to retrieve this uh, uh, soil moisture. So we train this uh, machine learning technique with, uh, with their different parameter like linear, uh, their cost function, their epsilon values. So all models have different tuning parameter. So we run uh, many combinations and then we found that this combination is best for uh, soil moisture retrieval in, in our study area. And then after tuning it, we retrieve the soil moisture by using all this method. And we found that this is during the uh, 21st December case that after tuning the model, we got the coefficient and then we predicted and by using this coefficient, we predicted the soil moisture values over the Varanasi, our calibration validation site. Calibration validation site and then we all also tested in, in a different uh, season also, like this is a December image and we tried to test on the January image that it, what, what is the accuracy level. And we found that uh, SBC and this uh, ANFIS is giving a uh, much better result for soil moisture retrieval, you can see. In the Taylor diagram, that it is quite close to the our this one, and if you see here, this is giving a, a much better result during the calibration, but during the validation, uh, SBC and this. Uh, um,
but colon fish is giving much better result for soil moisture retrieval. So we use finally this SBC to measure this soil moisture over this area. Similarly, we tried at a satellite level that recently uh, one of our PhD student published this paper in JARS that she tried to, uh, because uh, if you see the SMOS and SMAP spatial resolution, it is around uh, 36 kilometer. So one pixel size is 36 kilometer and it is quite coarse. But in one uh, 36 kilometer by 36 kilometer area, you are getting only one value. But if you are going for the uh, local application, then you need a high, high resolution data sets. So in this work, we try to downgrade or uh, disaggregate this data from 36 kilometer to nine kilometer and then to one kilometer. So at, at the last, by uh, using uh, this uh, algorithm, machine learning algorithm, we downscale this data from 36 or nine kilometer to one kilometer, and then we provided the uh, uh, one kilometer map. So in this, we also use our in-situ soil moisture network over here. That is also, uh, in, uh, we are uh, already developed with the help of ISO. And then we tried in different uh, area that how this uh, overall equation is performing. And with the help of this uh, SMAP, with the help of our downscale, with the help of in situ, we do the performance evaluation and then we release this product. So uh, here, here you can say that this is your uh, LST line surface temperature, then one kilometer, we have NDVI one kilometer, then we down uh, means downscale that SMAP to one kilometer. So this is uh, your SMAP based soil moisture values and it is giving quite uh, uh, in, it is in agreement with our in situ soil moisture. Similarly, we are trying at a uh, 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 soil moisture retrieval at a higher spatial resolution. It is a one of the pro project that is funded under Skatson one utilization program. And this we are, we are doing the spatial resolution of the soil moisture by uh, using only uh, microwave product. So in this case, we use both uh, optical and microwave uh, fusion. But in this case, we are using uh, fusion of microwave with the microwave. So here we are using a scat set one back scatting and then we try to uh, downscale or disaggregate this 36 kilometer course level uh, SMAP or SMOS, SMOS data set with the help of this scat set back scatting which is available at two kilometer to our two kilometer soil moisture product. So this is one of the question that we are using um, by disaggregating this course resolution pixel with the help of this fine resolution information and then we downscale to a uh, high soil, uh, yeah, better soil moisture uh, product. So here you can see that we are using the backscatting, but in this case you need to find this beta scaling function. And this scaling function, if you see, we are using uh, this uh, VV and uh, this brightness temperature and cross um, is copolarization of backscattering. We are trying to get the differences and then we are trying to get the things from the brightness, uh, brightness temperature that is obtained by the microwave satellite SMAP. And then we get BA. So this is your uh, SCATSAT one satellite that is launched by India, and uh, back in 2017-18. And it is you can see that it is a two kilometer product that is giving you a back scattering value. Then this is the beta that we by merging that uh, uh, your uh, scaling uh, that uh, back scattering value and brightness temperature. This is scale map. So once you have this beta then these values are already given by the satellite. It is also given by the satellite. Just put your beta, it will downscale it. So this beta needs all this calculation. So most of the downscaling algorithm, the scientists are behind to find a better value of beta. So if your beta is good, you can easily downscale this coarse resolution soil moisture to small, uh, fine resolution. So this is your beta and then after, um, uh, this is your SMAP coarse resolution soil moisture data sets at 36 kilometer. And then we had a beta and then we disaggregate to a fine resolution data set over the region. So it is it is a two kilometer product as compared to a 36 kilometer uh, SMAP data set. So that two kilometer because it is a microwave product so it will be available during uh, monsoon seasons also. So that is one of the work that we are uh, already finished and hopefully that algorithm will be launched from, uh, from ISRO. And this is the comparison between your ground measure, distributed and SMAP satellite data set that how it is performing. So you can see this is your SMAP satellite data set at a 36 kilometer resolution. This is your ground measured and this is uh, uh, disaggregated or downscale using our equation. So you can see it is in quite a good agreement with your, uh, uh, you can say ground measured data set. So your, your accuracy is still not that 
changed. The accuracy is there and you, you are now getting a 2 km product instead of 36 km that can be using different fine resolution applications. This is another work that we are using some uh, more advanced method like triangle method, thermal inertia and dispatch. Again, this is a PhD student published in uh, IEEE TGRS this year only. So in this, we have used different uh, other method like triangle, thermal inertia and dispatch to get a uh, downscale one kilometer product by using uh, uh, coarse resolution nine kilometer satellite data sets. So again, we have this brightness temperature at nine kilometer we put in the single channel algorithm like tau omega. I already showed you how tau omega work with the help of dielectric constant and other thing. We get the uh, soil moisture retrieval uh, in our condition because we provide our input data set based on our uh, Indian condition and then we get a uh, soil moisture at 9 km based on uh, condition, local condition. Then we uh, use this uh, downscaling method triangle thermonesia and dispatch. There are three uh, very important methods right now is available that can be used to uh, downscale the soil moisture and then we compare all this method and we found that this uh, uh, thermal ratio is giving quite better result for soil moisture retrieval. So this is you can say this is a core solution one pixel there is only one value but we downscale to uh, you can say one kilometer so you can see that same pixel is now disaggregated into several different pixels and now you giving you can see the uniform value over here, but you can see number of different value over here. So it is downscale to this. This is by one method. This is by uh, this is by triangle. This is by uh, thermal. Uh, yes. First one is your SMAP L2 soil moisture. Then after disaggregation, B is your thermal inertia, C is your dispatch, and D is your triangle method. So all these method you can see that you are used to disaggregate this soil moisture. So you can see that your uh, this. Uh, dispatch method is giving uh, quite a better uh, delineation with this our river Ganga you can see so it is giving a much better result in uh, this uh, mapping here you cannot see the Ganga very clearly so you can see that dispatch is giving a much better uh, distribution of the pixels as compared to all the two methods so it is recently published in TGRS and uh, what are the challenges now? So uh, if you see that uh, we are using a number of things. So one of the biggest challenges is that we are confined to only one model right now, Miranov or Dobson for dialectic mixing model. So there is a need of, uh, if you go with the Miranov model in more detail, that you will see that uh, it is uh, not fully physical model. It is semi-physical. You need at least soil uh, data set in that model so that you can uh, give a better uh, estimate of mixing uh, that dialectic constant. So what are the new method that we can develop so that we can have a better representation of our soil dielectric constant because that is a one important sensitive parameter that is needed to um, for soil moisture retrieval because based on that dielectric constant we get our smooth surface solubility based on that we are getting our dry surface reflectivity. So if this dielectric constant is erroneous there is a problem then you have a problem in your smooth and rough surface reflectivity. So what formulation we can use to retrieve that uh, dialectic uh, constants. So another important uh, problem is your uh, what is vegetation water content that currently we are facing challenges with the optical data sets. We tried to use uh, our scatset one for vegetation water content retrieval so that we can get this uh, through vegetation index VWC and VWC we are using to get uh, this tau in uh, for transmissivity calculation. So we need more uh, better solution because we are again using BI and um, uh, for vegetation water content and then we are multiplying with the BP that uh, uh, coefficient that is generated by Tom Jackson's, uh, uh, Thomas Jackson's uh, ground experiment. So can we try to generate those things for our Indian conditions also? So because 0.12 may be good for their reason, but that 0.12 uh, may be not good for our, our reason. So we are trying to tackle this problem. We are now did a number of uh, experiment to estimate this vegetation water content. We are trying to re remodel that BP for our reasons. So that is one of the challenges that we are currently trying to do. Again, we are taking this vegetation as cutting albedo zero, but actually, even it is a low height crop, there must be some scattering to reduce the burden on our server to get a better representation of the uh, better simulation of the soil moisture because 
what happened we are not uh, simulating just for india or just for our state we are simulating for whole globe so if you are putting a lot of uh, heavy models in your uh, program then you will you will not be able to generate soil moisture product at a daily interval because you are generating product the soil moisture product at a, a 6 am 6 pm time we call as ascending and descending overpasses during both we are getting this soil moisture and we are running that uh, equation for whole globe so if you put very heavy equations for vegetation scattering albedo actually equation is very heavy there are number of equations are there if you put all those equation in your uh, the triple model then you, uh, your system uh, it will not be able to provide a soil moisture value at a uh, daily interval uh, in, in a real time so that's why uh, we need to uh, see some solution how we can have this vegetation scattering albedo by simplifying that equations so that instead of taking omega as zero we have will have some values so that is one of the challenges that currently people are working on how we can get this scattering albedo term by using some physical equation instead of putting just zero or 0.05 or something so how we can calculate it how we can integrate integrate that uh, omega value again we are trying this fine resolution soil moisture height higher and temporary scale resolutions because 36 km is quite coarse we need a uh, soil moisture at a sub kilometer level because initially we are up to 1 km so can we provide soil moisture at 500 m 250 m 10 m something like this at higher temporal resolution because sentinel 2 data is there sentinel 1 data is there their temporal resolution is uh, now because up to in satellite is allow 6 days or 10 days so we can provide up to 20 m uh, soil moisture values but problem is uh, those temporal resolution is not that good if you need daily data sets then those satellites are not good so how we can tackle this solution can we integrate some uh, land surface model with this so that we can provide uh, this soil moisture data set at a higher spatial and temporal scale again uh, if uh, there is a need of assimilating this soil moisture in our regional circulation model so that we can improve our weather forecasting capability so this is the one of the book that we have edited with the uh, some of the soil moisture scientist like this satellite is small satellite uh, soil moisture analysis and entity and launched with uh, uh, means all developed by uh, professor yang ke so it is one of the means uh, you can say the baseline satellite that is actually developed after 20 25 years of effort by yang and then it is launched after first time he uh, uh, give the white paper to isa and in 1990 and they rejected his proposal and then again he modified in 1995 again given again it is turned down and 2000 finally it get passed and then it take around 10 to 15 years to develop this uh, you can say 20 years to develop this technology to get this small satellite and uh, there are number of things happened with this satellite like there are some rfi problem happened radio frequency interference so that problem somehow solved and then is map uh, smap take a lesson from this mos and now smos smap is providing uh, better uh, retrieval of soil moisture um, as compared to smos because they rectified some of the issues that is faced by the smos so it is quite a long effort that is done by num- number of scientists and then this soil moisture uh, satellites are launched so thank you uh, if you have any question please ask hello hello yes sir uh, thanks sir for your uh, thanks for solution on the basics of so much uh, and the uh, algorithm algorithms and the models etc so if uh, participant have any questions you can please post it here um hello srilaj yeah uh, may i may ask a question that uh, whether uh, this uh, when a heavy rainfall or or uh, heavy wind condition is there any difficulty in retrieving the uh, soil moisture from satellite uh, or what could be the challenges associated with the, when such kind of a system occur that is my question thank you rashmi actually mm-hmm. when, whenever there is a heavy rainfall and mm-hmm. uh, it is for a uh, you can say even 15 minute 10 minute then mm-hmm. there is a saturation of soil happened because of this rainfall Okay. so instead of saying the soil moisture we are saying that it is a water locked situation because all pores are filled so we don't say it is a soil moisture well is over there because there is a, a flooding situation over there if there is a heavy rainfall in light drizzle or something 
uh, soil absorbs some part of the soil moisture, uh, soil uh, mist that moisture. And if it is not saturated, then we can get some information. But if it is saturated, there is a heavy rainfall, so we don't retrieve that soil moisture because then we flag that value as uh, uh, porous material. Be because that time, uh, that soil moisture is more than 0.6 meter cube meter cube. It means all pores are already filled. Okay. Okay. So I have a question. Uh, since, uh, <coughs> along the challenges of said, I also have heard that this uh, microwave saturated flavor uh, does not work well on uh, like uh, hill slopes or a mountain east of it. For example, the, our sites in Kerala or most of the regions where we have the observatories here are of, uh, like slopes and valleys and uh, mountain currents. So, yeah. Yes, yeah, so one, one of the challenges that we are facing with the forest area is like uh, canopy is very dense. So, uh, element can penetrate through those canopy, but again, uh, if you don't have proper quantification of the roughness parameter, then your rough surface reflectivity is not that good. So, what uh, we can do that uh, we need to prepare, a for, at least for our country, we need to prepare our roughness data, database. If we have the roughness database for the Kerala regions, for the other regions, then we will have some idea that how roughness is changing in the area. And if we incorporate those roughness parameter in our model, then accuracy will be improved. Because if you see the Ferrazolin, that we did from some of the uh, European sites, we have the roughness database, and now they are giving uh, very good soil moisture accuracy in, in their area. But those type of work is currently needed in, in our countries also, so that we can have a better databases. That is for where we can go and measure this roughness thing. Uh, this is soil, again, soil roughness. Soil roughness. Yes, and soil parameters, right. One more, one more question I have is this about the different sensors we use for measuring soil moisture. Some some use the studio technique, sometimes uh, the FDR, you know, and then several type of sensor. For example, we use this uh, Delta Gibbs or Hydras. Uh, these Hydrex, Hydras say that they have a uh, dielectric invariance of electrometry, which has both a uh, imaginary part and the real part kind of thing. So they, they argue that they have the best uh, sensors in soil moisture, and this map usually prefers Hydras soil moisture data. Yes. Yes, we, we have a hydroprobe network here that we are using this hydroprobe network to monitor this surface and surface soil moisture. And we are calibrating actual our parameter by using the hydroprobe data sets only. Because with the cosmos, what is the problem that it is a uh, it is good in spatial resolution, means their footprint is quite high, but penetration we are not sure because it is varying quite a lot in different soil condition. So if you are going with the subsurface surface, then it is good to be, go with the Hydra probe network. And regarding, I think you, uh, uh, because there is some breaking breaking in your voice, so I'm just catching the keywords and trying to answer. So uh, can you write two or three lines over here in the chat box because I, uh, your voice is breaking down. That's why I'm not able to hear your questions very clearly. Okay. okay. Uh, so in the meantime, if someone else have a question, you can post this. Yeah. Hello, sir. Good evening. Good, good evening, Rajat. Sir, I have a question uh, in the slide that you have showed that you have used uh, several machine learning models for soil moisture retrieval. Yes. So yes. I would like to know like uh, how many sensors because for the training, uh, we need a lot of data for training the machine learning models. So what is like how many sensors observed data that you have used for the training or you have used any satellite data or uh, in situ uh, crop data has been used? Uh, actually, Sentinel-1, uh, we are using Sentinel-1 back scattering to build, build that model, okay? So, you know, if you machine learning, we need uh, uh, some input parameter and some uh, in-situ data sets. So yes. here, in, in our case, we use soil moisture uh, measured by Hydra probe, like around 60 stations over here. So we measure data set for around uh, four different phenological, means with different crop stages, and we have around 300 points to train our model. So out of that, 70% we used to uh, develop a model with, with in situ and back scattering data sets. So if you go with the simple relation that mm -hmm. we have this back scattering from Sentinel-1, we have in situ soil moisture, we build some equations, we get a, uh, that uh, coefficients, 
and then we provided only the back scattering and that coefficient to get the soil moisture values okay that like y equal to mx plus c yeah, yeah. is your back scattering and y is your simulated soil moisture so once we have the y equal to mx plus c uh, that mx plus c m and c are known you need to put your back scattering you will get the soil moisture so similar type of thing that uh, in, instead of using the linear model we use some uh, that uh, machine learning technique because they are better uh, learn the things their learning rate is um, uh, better right. as compared to this linear models so yes. we around we have around 200 220 30 points we use for the calibration of model 70% data set and rest we uh, after uh, predicting the soil moisture we compare it with our 70% and 30% data set ground data set whether our prediction is good or not so we tried all 14 models and we found that that SBC is going or uh, this uh, ANFIS is quite uh, close to our uh, ground observation observed data set. So we use that model for large scale prediction of uh, soil moisture. Okay. And secondly, sir, like uh, the data points, sir, so you maybe have also considered temporal like uh, variations of this data, right? Yes. Yes. So um, as I told that we use the different stages. We, uh, for example, uh, from December to March, we uh, did a field experiment over here with uh, wheat with, uh, crop. So, uh, in, uh, we measured in the, during the December around uh, 60 point, then during the uh, January, in February, and March. So, we uh, used these post uh, dates for soil moisture data. Set. So, we divided uh, once uh, in work work, what we did, we divided a data set uh, like that if you want to go for a uh, robust model that can be used in any season or any crop stages. Mm -hmm. So what we did, we uh, in December, suppose you have a 60 data points. So we, we took 40, uh, remove 40 for calibration and 20 for validation. Similarly, in January, we take 40 and then we March, uh, February, uh, February 40 and March 40. And then we combine this 40, 40 for as a calibration and just 20, 20 as a validation. So we are taking, we, we are giving, uh, giving information to a model for all the different uh, stages so model can train uh, better but if you use only december january february as cal for calibration and predict for march your performance will not be good because your model don't know uh, just things in uh, of march season or march month so this way we are uh, to train our model in a better way we we give model uh, information about all the stages so that it can pick up and then train your, their coefficient accordingly Okay, sir. Thanks. Okay, okay, Shilas. Very good question. And uh, uh, I can see that uh, uh, with the, uh, this uh, Hydra probe, actually, uh, uh, we, uh, over there, we compared this to three devices that we have that Delta T and this uh, uh, Hydra probe and there is one more devices that provided by their preferred by their government. So we compared and we found that that Hydra probe is quite close to uh, uh, is quite accurate as compared to uh, that uh, uh, gravimetric soil moisture content. So what they did, they take the gravimetric soil moisture, they calculate the, uh, this bulk density and they get the volumetric soil moisture over there. And then they then they compare with the Delta T Hydra probe and, uh, and other devices. And they found that the Hydra probe is quite close to the uh, that uh, uh, gravimetric matter, so that's why they are using. But uh, again, it is like a uh, you can say uh, government uh, things also because if you see that uh, recently ISRO is launching another uh, develop another soil moisture net, uh, sensor called Shul. So now uh, whenever you apply for soil moisture uh, probe and something, they will recommend that use Shul instead of using uh, costly Hydra probe. Or other devices, so sometimes it's all you know uh, things that uh, we need to uh, use because a shul or that is an indigenous, and it is quite close to Hydra probe information everything. So now we have to use shul uh, instead of Hydra probe. But we are now currently stick to the Hydra probe because we have a large legacy of data set around four of, uh, four years. So we will go with the Hydra probe data set also, and we have a network in India also with the Hydra probe. So uh, you can say that uh, <laughs> it is very tough to get a uniform measurement all over there and then unless there is a consensus that uh, government decide that all are using this type of census only. Then again, there will be a question then why you're uh, uh, popularizing a political company only. Even if you say that accuracy is good, but they will ask that why you are, you, are, you must have some your uh, internal benefit. That's why you are uh, 
popularizing some particular company. So there are a number of issues. So whatever we have, we have to use it. Otherwise, uh, we'll never be a you know good ground data science. Thank you, sir. Any more questions? Uh, yeah, I have one more question. It's a general question. Suppose we have a, um, a forest canopy, as you mentioned, it will be very difficult to estimate the uh, soil moisture from the satellite technique. Then what could be the probable uh, uh, measurement that a person can attain to get the maximum uh, uh, accurate uh, soil moisture in such a scenario? Because we have tropical rain for, uh, rain, uh, uh, rainfall or uh, tropical forests. So how good uh, our accurate measurements from the satellite or 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 what is the other choice that we do have left out with okay so uh, actually one of the thing that currently we are uh, facing that that i i mentioned that roughness parameter so we mm. need to have uh, a better database of roughness in in, a, in our forest area first we need to do that mm. and i think if you if we do a rigorous uh, measurement in our forest in maybe one year or eight month nine month we will have a very good roughness database of our forest. So first we need to do that, at least for, for example, in Kerala, we can uh, implement that or we can use that in some of the area where we have a good, uh, means people those who are doing the ground sampling mm -hmm. and the thing they can also do. So we, we, we can build a database because manpower here in India is quite higher as compared to uh, developed countries. Here, many people are doing PhD, many people are doing this stuff. Research, so that thing is possible. Second thing, uh, with the like, uh, uh, Optical data sets, it is not very easy to get the vegetation water content mm -hmm. because their penetration is not that uh, good through the canopy also. So now there is a uh, need of another census like S-band or something because S-band is giving much better forest uh, prop, uh, forest property as compared to your optical. But for a meantime, it is good to go with the LAI to get the vegetation water content, better measurement of the roughness parameter so that we can improve our uh, models. Model is um, mostly more or less same. You need to go, go with all those things like dialectic mixing model. You need to calculate the physical temperature of the canopy, physical temperature of the soil. So that is another problem that we can get a physical temperature of the canopy by using uh, this uh, optical satellite. But at the ground is very problematic because your lights cannot penetrate up to ground in, in a dense forest. Yeah. So we can get canopy top temperature, but it is tough to get a uh, soil temperature. So we need to see how we can get with uh, that soil temperature with the help of other models like uh, your major scale model like WRF and other things. So if we merge this major scale model, regional circulation model with our uh, satellite retrieval technique, then accuracy uh, may be improved. Yes. So that's we are thinking that better uh, instead of going with a direct tau omega model or something because tau omega is for uh, low crop, if you're going with a rated transfer model. Mm -hmm. so. We, maybe we can go with the assimilation of the soil moisture, satellite soil moisture, to provide the initial condition and then retrieve soil moisture in the dense forest area. So that can be the another approach. Okay. So first we need to look uh -huh. at this roughness measurement. So yes, how we yes. can get a better roughness value? Because once we have the roughness, then we can get the reflectivity and emissivity of that forest. Okay. So if emissivity is good, then our problem is that it will solve because we have, we have at least canopy top temperature. So. Yes. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Rishma. Thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you.